Hi, welcome to this little screencast. I'm going to show you here yeah, how I made this little animated man in QGIS using new QGIS temporal functions. Um, I'll show you the process of how I extracted the frame from a GIF, then the expression I used in my layer symbology, and how I added the little drop shadow underneath the man for good measure. It's not perfect, it doesn't do everything that we wanted to do. Uh, for example, it only walks in one direction at the moment and animation is probably not quite as smooth as we'd like it to do, but um, it should give you some inspiration for making your own animations in QGIS using the new temporal framework. So let's dive in and show you how I got started. The first thing I do then is when I'm uh, looking for an animation, I just go and Google for a GIF. So you can search for anything like walking uh, let's do a dead zombie, that sounds like fun. Uh, okay, maybe not. Um, we need to find something. Okay, so we're going to find an animation of somebody walking. Uh, maybe this guy here. That looks pretty cool. Um, and then um, and go to the website, make sure you're getting something that's free to download. Um, right, when you're happy with what you've got, um, you can go and grab the GIF. Uh, let's see, let's go find one. I'm just going to save it here. All right, and so now it's in my downloads folder. Then I'm going to go to, um, I've made a folder for all my. Um, little animations. So I just need to check what I downloaded it as. Um, so it's this guy here. And then I'm going to run a little command. Yeah, I'm first going to make a directory for the frame. So A nice name like that, and then um, I'm going to run a command using Image Magic. So, if you don't have it installed on Mac, you can just do brew install Image Magic like that, um, and that will give you this nice Unix command line tool to convert images. So, what I'm going to do is convert it from a, a single GIF image into a directory full of frames. Uh, and this is the, the syntax we use. So um, I need to use the tenor, tenor.gif, and I'm going to put it into the directory of cool dude walking, cool and it's going to save it as PNG images. There's one thing to add here is that I've got this little argument in the image magic conversion command to make sure that anything that's white in the image gets saved as transparent in the output file so that we don't have a big white block um, going over our map. So if I run that and um, do an ls in that folder, I can see it's put all the frames in here. And you're going to want to take note of how many frames it's made. So it's actually made 21 frames starting from 0 through to 21 and we'll use that to calculate um, like a little make a little formula to like work out what frame number we should be showing um, and just to show you what it made um, if you open it in your file explorer you'll see that it's made just one image per scene if you click on those images I hope the background is white we're gonna see now when we uh, is transparent, I mean, we'll see now when we bring it up in QGIS. Okay, so that's the prep work. You just make a note of the, the directory that you're in. Keep that on your clipboard. Um, so this directory here. We'll keep that in our clipboard so that we can use that in our formula in QGIS. All right, then we can jump over to QGIS. Um, I'm using a GPX track. You could use any time-based data that probably makes more sense where it's something that's following like a, 
a trail or something like that. Um, and what I'm going to do here, I'll just remove this for now here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a marker and I'm going to set it to raster image marker. If you had a series of SVG images, the process would be the same. But in this case, we're going to be using rasters. Um, and then you need to create a formula like this. Now I've already stubbed in the formula. So I always like to just keep the command that I used to create the images just so that if I look back at my style one day and I'm trying to remember how I did it, I've got it all explained. Okay, and then um, I'm going to go over here and set the, um, the base part. So basically what this little expression does is um, um, it will take the directory and then uh, the base part of the file name and then add a number based on the modulus. Now we saw there's 21 frames, so I'll use a modulus of 21. And that's based, based on the seconds in the current map time uh, start time. So the current map start time is the one that you see listed over here as the, as the animation is playing. So we're going to basically, every time it hits 21, we'd have a modulus of 0, and 22 would be a modulus of 1, and so on and so on. So we'd always have uh, some number in the range of 0 to 21. I've lost 22 frames. That's going to be appended onto the image name. Okay, so I just need to make sure that I've got this path part here correctly, which is the uh, cool divert walking part. So I'm just going to go and replace this like that. Okay, and then it's going to put an underscore um, between the name and the number over here. You can see that the output preview here, although my path is too long to probably see what it looks like. Um, if we switch it, we can see our guy there. Okay. I can see there's a problem with the transparency. We'll go and try and fix that just now. But let's just do a little quick demo to see. Okay, there it's walking along. Um, we might want to go to the to this thing over here and set it to 21 frames per second as well to match how many 22 frames to match how many frames we have, and then we get a much smoother looking <laughs> animation. Like I said, he unfortunately can only walk in one direction at the moment. If I put him over this side here, you'll see him walking nice and smoothly. <laughs> All right, now um, I need to go and fix that to make that background transparent. So I need to just understand what color the background is at the moment. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to regenerate the, the output that let's try with that 10% uh, I need to be one directory up go look in our gallery again okay I can see he's now gone transparent his shoe's gone a little bit um, transparent too which is not what I want so Try with a lower fuzz factor. Oh, still a bit fuzzy. Okay, looks like I'm not going to get the shoe perfectly organized in this session, but uh, you'd have to go play around with it. I'm just going to check a few others. It doesn't look too bad. I think it's going to look okay in animation. Let's go back here. Now, um, if we just start the animation again, we can see him playing now. He's looking nice and transparent on the map. His shoe does look a bit weird, but only if you really aware that his shoe is not, um, you know, if you're only if you're looking at that. All right, so that's the basic process of making a cool dude to walk across your map. Um, the next challenge is to figure out how to make him walk in the right direction. So you'll see in this. Part here is actually walking backwards 
which is also cool, but probably not what you want to do. Um, the last thing I can show you is how to add a little shadow effect to the man to make it maybe a little bit more interesting to look at. So I'm going to duplicate this um, layer here. And in the duplicate copy, I'm going to go and uh, enable draw effects. And for the transform, I'm going to, uh, for the first part here, I'm going to set it uh, to transform instead of source. And enable reflect vertical and tell it to, to modify only, not to draw and modify. And then I have a drop shadow applied here as well. And the drop shadow, um, uh, let me just check here. So the drop shadow should be 180 degrees probably. And this is going to be a bit of a trial and error to get the right distance. So you can just um, put it next to your you can see maybe it needs to go a little bit further. Um, let's try 22 millimeters. Okay, let's take him for a walk and see how that looks. Right, I want to move him to the part where he's not walking backwards. Yeah, the, the drop shadow is a bit strong, so I'm going to get rid of that, uh, make it more transparent. Make it a little bit more subtle like that. Okay, and there goes your dude walking with a shadow across your uh, terrain. Uh, I hope you have fun. Please share the examples of how you've made animations in QGIS. Really looking forward to seeing all the cool effects that people can come up with. Thanks for watching.